The last of the great human freedoms is the ability to choose one's attitude in any given circumstance. And I can extract myself from the suffering because my attitude can trump my ego's frustration about the situation if I lock in power of my mind to choose differently. I'm gonna master this thing called teaching and I'm gonna do whatever it takes, I'm gonna travel whatever distance, I'm gonna pay whatever price to give my service of love across this planet. And I'm not gonna let any human being on the face of this planet stop me, not even myself. And genius is available in all of us in the area of our highest value when we care enough intrinsically to be inspired to go after solving those problems. It's, it's waiting for all of us to do that. We can expand our awareness, consciousness, to expand who we are as beings into this new human being that we're becoming. It's the tension and the contrast that actually helps to push us through to the next level of evolution. Our cells have consciousness and so does the bacteria. So we can also tune into our bodies and, and work with our bodies more knowing that and appreciating these billions of points of consciousness. Now when that change takes place, the momentum that's created in our life from that moment on is monumental insights, the wisdom, the guidance, the direction, the spontaneous goodness, serendipity, coincidence, things start to work together for good because we're now in a flow of our personal mind, but we're in the flow of the mind of God. Welcome to the High Performance Health Podcast. This is a show entirely devoted to the exploration of physical vitality, emotional well-being, and mental fitness. I'm your host and tour guide, Ronnie Landis. I'm a multiple published author, international speaker, performance health coach, global activist, and wellnesspreneur. So buckle your seat, get ready to take notes, and enjoy the ride. It's go time. Before we start the show, I want to highlight one of our sponsors, which is an incredible superfood and alchemical herbal nutraceutical company called Now Alchemy. I've been working with the Now Alchemy products for well over six years and have seen this company grow and expand through the leadership of my dear friend, Archer Love, who is the founder, CEO, and chief formulator for all of the products they provide. They offer a wide range of plant concentrated tinctures designed to improve immune function, regulate our stress response, improve sleep quality, enhance cognitive function, improve the cell to cell communication of our mitochondrial energy production, and support all aspects of bodily health. Some of my favorite products I use on a regular basis are the Ormus Plus, the Limitless Formula, the Immortal, their Shilajit formula in their Vitality product to name a few. They also offer unique formulations such as C60 for detoxification and cellular EMF protection, Nano CBD combined with Ormus Minerals in their Atlantis formula which is an algae based non-oxidized omega-3 product. I love the entire product line and appreciate the integrity to quality that Archer puts into all of his products. You can learn more by going to www.nowalchemy.com and use the coupon code HUMANPOTENTIAL, that's HUMANPOTENTIAL, all one word, to get a discount on your order. Now, let's get ready for today's show. Greetings and aloha. Welcome to another episode of the Holistic Human Optimization Show. I am your host, Ronnie Landis. And we are officially on season three, or I should say series three, of our solo episode journey. And what an incredible journey it's been so far. We have gone through series one, which was all about holistic nutrition. Series two, which was all about life force cultivation. And now we are going quantum. We are going to a whole nother level of human potential. And this series is really focused on the mind-body connection. And really the best place to start with that, as I was putting together the lineup for the the topics that I want to get into with all of you, I decided that we are going to blast off, instead of going incremental and then going 
one step at a time, I decided, why don't we just go exponential in quantum right out the gate? I think you guys are ready for it. I'm definitely ready for it. I've been seething to get to this, <laughs> literally. And uh, I've just really been excited about putting together the ideas and putting together the thoughts and the concepts in my mind that I wanted to relay to you in this particular episode, because everything that we get into after this is going to, it's going to take us in unique directions. But this topic in particular is really the context in which everything else is going to build us towards. So it's almost like we're going all the way into the future. We're working our way back and we're integrating all of the practicalities. And then you listen to this episode again as you make your way to the end of this series. And I guarantee you will be hearing it in a completely new way. So the topic that we are focused on today is the timeless mind ageless body concept. And this is quite a concept. It's quite an idea. It's quite an incredible possibility to meditate on and to think about something that I've been thinking about for quite some time. Um, As you know, I've been focused in the fields of longevity, really. My focus has really been about life enhancement, the quality of our life, and the quantity of our life And as I've gotten deeper into a lot of the philosophical points of view, a lot of the different ideas from the Taoist and Vedic and shamanism and plant medicines and and different philosophical ideas around what is the point and purpose of life extension, what is the purpose of wanting to live longer, and what does that really look like, not just in our daily lives, and what can we contribute if we do have an enhancement of quantity in our years as well as quality, obviously, what is the deeper meaning of that? And how do you actually tap in from an inner engineering perspective? How do you tap into the inner workings of our physical system, our psychosomatic system, meaning the psyche, the brain, our our psychic energy, emotional content, spiritual energy, you might call that metaphysics, and integrating and activating the physical body, all the glandular systems, the hormone systems, and the nervous system in particular, how do you upgrade the operating system from within? Well, that's what we're going to be exploring in this series. And so this idea of timeless mind, ageless body, this term was coined by Deepak Chopra. He wrote a book, I think it was in the late 80s, he released it, called Timeless Mind, Ageless Body. That's where that idea comes from. And the idea is that when you have a mental state in the timeless, when it's a timeless mind, meaning that you live in the timeless, we might call that now, you live in the quantum reality, the, the reality beyond the physical three-dimensional material reality, you start to develop an ageless body. And now we know through the psychosomatic connection that the timeless idea of our mind, when basically when our brain is in a particular brain wave state, which we are going to get deep into, into brain wave states, what they mean, all the different brain wave states in new states that have not been conventionally discussed. Many people don't know about these new heightened states. They're not new states, but they're newly discovered brainwave states that we all have access to. When we are in a dominant state of mind, the hemispheres of our brain are synchronized and the electrical activity in the blood flow is circulating throughout the full circumference of our brain as a more dominant state than not. You might call that stress or not stress. You're basically stressed or you're not in stress for simple terms. That affects your physiology. That affects the cell-to-cell communication in your physiology. It affects inflammation markers. It affects anti-inflammation. It affects your genetics and your epigenetics and ultimately turns on or turns off certain genes that are associated with healing restoration, recovery, rejuvenation, i.e. longevity. So this has been something that I've been very fascinated for a long time. I spent most of my life meditating, not 
in the way of like, um, you know, more of the yogic or more of the Vedic understanding of meditation, but more from a martial artist perspective. And also eventually as a teenager being very focused on competitive sports, I got into meditation for the visualization activity and to visualize myself as a, as a champion. And, you know, what would that look like when I put myself into my sport and I was performing at the heightened state? In other words, I was in the flow. I was in a super enhanced flow state, which we're also going to talk about. And uh, I had a lot of success with that. I have a lot of experience with altered mental states from meditative standpoints, breathwork standpoints, how food, superfoods, herbs, supplements can enhance our, our brain chemistry and also plant medicines. I've had a, a – and we're going to actually in the next episode, I believe, we are going to go deeper into entheogens and the psychedelic medicines and that's going to be an exciting topic as well. But we'll put that to the side for now. Basically, my own experience and my own fascination with altered states as a way to increase human performance, human potential, and ultimately to reroute the healing systems in the body, the self-facilitated inner physician of the human body that doesn't require outside pills for every ill, um, even to the point where you don't even require so many outside substances, but you're able to tap into the inner workings of your parasympathetic nervous system, your autonomic nervous system, and you're able to reroute the the, the rehearsed patterns and the, the information that has been embedded into the nervous system. And you're basically able to upgrade the operating system to have a more dominant default state. So that's, uh, that's cool. And uh, so all of that has led me to this topic. And so I'm really excited to be able to share these ideas with you because I've been wanting to consolidate a lot of these ideas in a way that I could just share um, straightforward, put it all together for you. And uh, also for myself more than anything, because even preparing for this episode allowed me to really put a lot of pieces of the puzzle together. So we're both taking this journey together. I want to make that clear. Um, I'm not coming to you as a, a total expert um, like a world authority in all of these topics. I've been putting these puzzle pieces together and I'm simply distilling it and communicating it to you, hopefully in a way that's understandable, in a way that you can take action on and implement into your life. And we have a bulk of stuff to get into. So let's start getting into it. And as we go through it, we're just going to be in the flow of this um, there may need to be a part two to this. I don't know yet, depending on time, but we're going to get through this and we'll see how far we go and we'll see if we need to create a part two. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about as, we're, as it pertains to the timeless mind, ageless body idea, there's two things that we're going to really get into in this overall context, which is that our relationship to time is directly connected to our relationship to our body. They're interconnected and our mind or our nervous system is the interface between our physical biology, our personal physical experience, and the relationship and interpretation or the perception that we have of time. Now, we are not going to go too deep into that idea, and it quite an idea it is, but ultimately, what we want to understand first and foremost is that our interpretation of time and the dynamics of time have been very skewed. They are more of an idea, more of a concept than a, a conclusive empirical reality. What I mean by that is the way that we track time is through what's called Gregorian time or the Gregorian calendar, which is linear we are in our interpretation of time just like when we look at the evolutionary time line that is proposed to us it's a very clean cut straightforward narrow timeline of the past all the way to the present moment and then we can even draw out ideas of where that's going to go into the future based on that particular timeline probability now, what I want to tell you is that what we've discovered through scientific, like real, true, hardcore science 
is that time is not actually linear at all. It's dynamic, it's multidimensional, and it's also simultaneously happening all at once. So for example, and we, we definitely know this through the research of traumas in inner wounds and in inner child wounds, and even the, the research when you get into like past life regressions, um, there's essentially a time travel component that's occurring here because to the most basic example, when you think about your past, you're living your past memory and the the chemical association, like the chemistry of whatever those memories were, you are reliving that physically and mentally and emotionally in the present moment that you're in. You're not actually physically in the past, but you are re-experiencing it as if you were. And your brain does not know the difference between what's what. So you can really be experiencing past traumas, wounds, hurts, disappointments, regrets, sorrow, sadness, all of these things. And you may actually be creating a loop that's reinforcing the chemical stimulus that is bonded to those memories and whatever you interpret those, the meaning of those memories to be. And this is how the past creates the future. And it repeats itself through the cycles of our life until we learn to pattern interrupt. And then we begin to understand that if the past is happening in the present moment, and it's happening because of my unconscious intent, what happens if I become hyper conscious and aware, and instead of referencing my past to inform my my present, what if I reference my future And I bring, I magnetically bring my future self, my future possibility, the future destiny of who I am to be and all the things that I want to achieve and accomplish and all that kind of thing. What if I can bring my future into the present moment? Now, this is where it gets exciting. And this is where the cutting edge research is in the fields of neuroscience, neurophysiology, um, neurophysics. Um, you know, incredible people like Greg Braden and Joe Dispenza, um, you know, and so many other of these incredible luminaries. This is exactly what they're pointing to and what they're talking about. And we can actually allow our future to inform our present moment. But if we're worried and stressed out and uncertain about our future, likely because we're using past references of pain to inform what we are trying to protect against in the future, then we're going to recreate that cycle. And our relationship to time is going to be a very negative, detrimental relationship because ultimately when you look at the calendar, and by the way, the calendar is made up. There's only 10 actual months in the calendar. Two of them are completely made up. We won't go into all that right now. But just understand that the calendar is a way and your daily schedule is a way to organize what is otherwise, you know, just a cycle of of a, a, a day and night kind of cycle. It's not really this compartmentalized thing. But because we are in this three dimensional world, we do have to have one foot in the quantum world and one foot in the physical material world in order to anchor ourselves and make the most of ourselves. Otherwise, we're up in the clouds, or we're too material and too to the ground and we're too rigid. So the idea is to have your head in the clouds, feet on the ground, anchored in and also timeless So you're not gravitationally suppressed to the material world and you can't dream and envision new possibilities for yourself. So your relationship to time has got to expand into this state of timelessness. And the way that we do that, there's many ways to access that. Um, And we're going to get into the brainwave states and what those mean. And I think that's going to be really, really exciting because these are all immediately accessible Um, experiences that we can begin to not only have access to and have an experience, but through commitment, devotion to our own human potential, we can actually incorporate these states through different practices and reroute our nervous system to upgrade the dominant state of being from stress to blessed. 
you know, and that becoming the normality. One of the things I want to mention here, too, is that there's a doctor named Dr. Daniel Amen, and I got into his work about maybe seven or eight years ago. He's a famous um, neuroscientist and brain researcher, and he does these incredible scans on people's brains called SPEC scans. And ultimately, what these are doing is that they're doing um, – they're, they're, they're looking at the – the brain activity and the physical organ of the brain, they're scanning it for what is, what, what's the activity and what's the inhibition of activity in the brain. And ultimately what you start to see with people's brains is that when somebody has um, a, a, a degenerating brain, there are what looks like holes in their brain. Now these are not actually physical holes, but in the scans, now you can look this up on the internet, in the scans, when there's a, a hole or a crater like part of the image, what that actually indicates is that there's no blood flow, no electrical activity going to that region of the brain. So this idea, and this is super fascinating stuff. Now, what the idea that you only use whatever, 5% or 10% at most of your, your brain power, um, that that's true and not true. You actually... Well, it depends. There's there's distinctions to that, of course, but that's not a complete truth, right? Now, what we're talking about is actually gaining access to the full mobility and motility of the entire brain itself through these brainwave states and how to access them and how to practice tapping into them. But we actually, for the most part, use the full range of our brain um, unless there is a degenerative condition, unless there is some sort of toxicity, some kind of breakdown in the brain, which usually occurs over time. But now we're seeing this with younger and younger children. So that is an issue. That is something to point out for sure. Those are correctable things also, by the way, through all the things that we've talked about through health, lifestyle, supplementation, food, um, sleep, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Um, but we're going to go a lot deeper here now. So what we're talking about is there's states of your brain, brainwave states that increase electrical activity throughout the regions of the brain. And they actually connect the regions of the brain that might have been gone dormant because the neuron to neuron communication in the brain has been inhibited or it's been lulled down um, for any manner of reasons. So oh, we got a lot to get into. So we're just going to need to jump right into this particular, uh, this particular thing. And by the way, all of this, I'm just setting it up for you. We're going to really get into some, some really powerful stuff here. So let's start with brainwave states. Now, it's been discovered and it's pretty well known that there's four dominant brainwave states, right? That's delta, that's theta, that's alpha, that's beta, and now gamma wave brain state is a little more um, well known. Now, what's also been discovered is that there's also other brainwave states that have been discovered, particularly through studying the brains of monks and different, different caliber of monks that actually are tapping into more advanced brainwave states. So we're going to get into that. And what, 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 what is all this really leading to? Well, it's really leading into what we call flow states, being in the zero point energy, being in that in between and developing super cognitive enhancement. You can develop super cognitive enhancement, super memory recall, super really just tapping into the supernatural capacity of your brain and what's possible in accelerated learning, accelerated memory recall, healing neuronal synaptic connective tissue, healing gray matter tissue, which is associated with degenerative or anti-degenerative, um, you know, uh, neurodegenerative uh, components, right? Which also affects the, all the rest of the regions of the body as well. It's all directly connected. So let's talk about these, these basic brainwave states for, a, for a second. We have delta wave. Delta wave is really an extremely slow brainwave state. And it travels between 5 hertz 
to three hertz or three hertz to five. No, it's, excuse me. It's 0.5 hertz to three hertz. These are cycles per second. That's the le- That's how slow that brain wave state is. Theta wave is three hertz to eight hertz or three cycles to eight cycles per second. So that's really a deep restorative healing state, you know, especially when you're sleeping or you're in a deep meditation, um, particularly through the process of the inner engineering, which is a, it's a whole another topic, but something that I do with all my clients now. This is a restorative healing state. Then we have the alpha state, which is deep, deep relaxation. This is the initial stage of meditation, the onset of a a tapping into a deeper meditative state. And ultimately, this is where your parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system come into balance, right? Parasympathetic is the down regulation. It's it's autonomic, involuntary um, efficiency of the, the involuntary kind of components of the body. Uh, rest, relaxation, digestion, elimination, respiration, these kind of things. This is 8 hertz or 8 cycles per second to 12 cycles per second. Then we have the beta wave state. This is your everyday waking brain state. This is moderate to hyper mental activity. Um, And this is about 12 cycles per second to 36 hertz or 36 cycles per second. Okay, so those are pretty well known. Then we get into the gamma wave states, which there's actually multiple gamma wave states that have been identified. Gamma wave is basically described as the unity state, the flow state. And this is this is where the hemispheres of the brain start to come in more into synchronization. They come more into alignment and people report when they're in this state, particularly through meditative exercises, that they feel at one with life. There's no more this self-localization and compartmentalized from life. You become more one and unified with life. And this is ultimately what we call the flow state. And what's interesting about this, when you look at the the scans of people's, uh, the MRI scans of people's brain activity when they're in a gamma wave state, there's what's called a sweeping activity. So a lot of these other states, they they have a, um, how do you say, I want to say almost a linear or a unidirectional kind of effect. Um, the sweeping activity is a full circumference of electrical activity that sweeps through the entire brain. And that is the unification idea when everything in the brain, all the electrical sym- symphony essentially is in full harmonic symphon- symphonic kind of um, alignment or unity. That's when we feel in, in union. That's when we're in the flow, essentially. That's the timeless state. And that's about 36 to 44 cycles per second. Now, um, what's really interesting through the different types of research that's been done, particularly on advanced monks in different forms of meditative states, there's three other brain states that have been identified, which most people still don't know about, but they're definitely worth talking about because through mastering our default dominant state and the operating system through breath work, through meditation, through um, somatic healing and healing inner child wounds or whatever you want to call it, healing those inner fractures and coming more into congruence and integral alignment with ourself as a human being, mind, body, and spirit, then we're able to tap into these deeper brain states. So let's talk about hypergamma. So hypergamma is the monk-like intuitive flow state. Now, when we think of monks, that there might be a whole different uh, array of ideas that come about. And I think about the monk who has been trained to go out into sub-zero uh, temperatures in, in the snow and sit down in the snow and literally meditate and start to melt the ice and not only melt the ice that the monk is sitting in, but melt the ice in the full circumference of the energy that's being emitted from outside of that monk that's emerging through the intention and the energy that's being generated and that is being that's being 
emitted out. These have all been studied. This is all verified. This is not, it's not new age nothing. This is not um, conjecture. This has been practiced for thousands of years. This, this is sacred lineage, traditional practices and initiations that monks go through um, in their, 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 um, their journey towards self-realization and self-perfection, their perfection of their own human potential. That's really what these monks are doing. So I call hypergamma the monk-like intuitive flow state. That's another level of flow state. And that's about 44 hertz to 100 hertz or cycles per second. Now we're getting into something that is supernatural, that's beyond what we could even conceive of as possible, right? That's where we're pushing the edges of what the human being is possible of doing. Now, it doesn't stop there, though. There's two other states um, that are very, very interesting. Now, what's also been discovered is that there's a lambda brain state. And this, this, is, this, this takes it to a whole nother level. Talk about exponential progress. One of the themes in quantum physics that really interested me that I've actually applied to my nutrition strategy, which is that I'm not interested in incremental changes or incremental results. Yes, we have to build momentum. But then what happens when we've built momentum and then we have a quantum leap? You can have a quantum leap in your business. You can have a quantum leap in your relationships. You can have a quantum leap in your brain states. You can have a quantum leap in athletic performances. Um, This happens all the time. Call it a growth spurt, if you will. But this kind of thing happens all the time. And the way that you do it is through practice, practicing these practices that you'll utilize Every single day eventually will build the energy or the momentum to the point where now you have access to a quantum leap experience. Very similar when you do plant medicines, particularly medicines like ayahuasca, and you really are in that perfect space to have that experience, which I've had, and I'll talk more about my experiences in our next episode it's a quantum leap. It's exponential growth. And this, I would have to say, like, if, if anything, I was most likely in this exact state that we're about to talk about, which is the lambda brain state. And this is where the left and right hemispheres of the brain are completely synchronized. The corpus callosum between them interlocked, full communication between the right and left hemispheres, no separation whatsoever. This is almost unheard of in our current hyper uh, alpha wave culture. This is now, you know, just this right here just excites me so much because this is pointing to ultimate human potential. Now, it doesn't stop there. There's one more brain state that I want to mention. It's also been discovered on the completely opposite polarity of the lambda brain state. There's also something called epsilon brain state or brain wave. This is described as no mental activity whatsoever. In other words, being in suspended animation. Now, I guarantee almost nobody in the Western culture has ever experienced anything like this. Um, I can't say for sure, but I would just say based on our culture, this is a almost seemingly inaccessible or just unrealistic phenomenon. But the reason that we know about it is because there are individuals, particularly monks, that have trained themselves to the point where they are able to go to a place within themselves where there's no heart rate variability. There's no blood pressure. There's no mental activity whatsoever. And they're basically in a state of suspended animation, but they're also fully conscious at the same time, which also indicates that consciousness is not dependent on our brain activity. And this would seem obvious, but people like Ray Kurzweil and the whole transhumanism um, cult is so convinced that consciousness is located in the brain that, you know, if you just implant your brain into a computer, you'll live forever as yourself, which is like, you know, it's the most cockamamie, hokey idea ever. But aside, you know, now that we, we can actually point to that fact right now, it's like you guys are barking up the wrong tree because this right here shows that consciousness is not a mental phenomenon. You can have full consciousness, maybe even the greatest capacity of consciousness, 
and have no mental activity happening whatsoever. This is zero hertz to 0.5 hertz or cycles per second. It's unheard of, except in these these different you know different um, these these monks and maybe other people in the world. I would say that are completely devoted, like have completely devoted their entire being and their entire life to this this practice. So one last thing I want to mention about the brainwave states, because there's another thing that I want to get to that kind of connects all this. The lambda brain state and the epsilon brain wave, although different in frequency, allow for the exact same state of consciousness. That's a quote by Greg Braden. I'm going to say that one more time. The lambda brain wave and the epsilon brain wave, although different in frequency, one is hyper frequency, the other is actually an absence of frequency, allow for the exact same state in consciousness. That is a very interesting point, which also basically indicates that, you know, we're all trying to get to the top of the mountain and there's different paths to the top of the mountain, but ultimately the view looks the same once you get there. And so there's different ways to access these different brain states, different forms of breath work, meditation, um, inner engineering work. And when my, my whole focus and my work is really about putting all of the optimization pieces and puzzles together so we can operate as the most optimized version of ourself through and through, step by step. And we can also increase our longevity capacity and the ageless phenomenon of our physical body so we have more time to explore our unlimited human potential. So that is really, really exciting stuff right there. I hope you're as interested in it as I am. Now, the next thing I want to get into is the quantum field. Because now, what's the point of tapping into these brainwave states? What's the point of upgrading the operating system? Well, it's actually about upgrading our human potential. And what the, the actual application of that is, what can we actually create through our own volition? Through our own inner, inner engineering and our own inner creativity, what can we create if we can tap into inner states that are, are, that are the, the zero point or the, the impetus, the, the, the genus, I know the genus, the genesis of creation itself? Well, there's three states in the quantum field, according to quantum mechanics, quantum physics. I've been studying this stuff for you know a good five, six, maybe seven years on and off. It's something that is my side study. It's, it's understanding the mechanics of the universe, understanding cosmology, a little bit about astro, uh, astrology, but more to the point of the mechanics of what we might call the holographic virtual field simulation um, experience that we're having. And this has all been documented in a series of books. I originally got into a book called The Holographic um, Reality or The Holographic World. It's, a holy, it's been so long since I've gone to that book. It's basically by a man named Michael Talbot who passed away in 1993. And he compiled the research of two individuals, the physicist David Bohm and the neurophysicist Carl Prebrum. And I actually interviewed a man, um, Dr. Eben Alexander, who wrote the book Proof of Heaven. And then he wrote a new book recently, a couple of years ago, called The Mindful Universe. I interviewed this man twice and his story is probably the most compelling story of a near-death experience in bringing back that experience. And he was a hardcore, atheistic, materialistic, um, neuros neuroscientist, neurosurgeon, I believe. And this completely turned him completely around. And now he's one of the, the most incredible speakers on quantum field phenomenon and something just worth checking out, just understanding that our reality is different than what we've expected to. And a lot of it is based on the brainwave state that we're in as a dominant experience, as you might be able to uh, ascertain at this point. So let's talk about this. The three states of the quantum field. Now, I got this from Greg Braden, who I, I think the world of this man, I think he's one of the greatest scientists and one of the greatest voices for this information in the world. I, I really kind of got this from him, so I want to give credit to that. Um, basically, what this what this is all indicating is that all possibilities 
already exist simultaneously as quantum potential. So when we look at this whole phenomenon around time, it it appears that time is happening synonymously or it's kind of, yeah, it's happening spontaneously, like a spontaneous remission, a spontaneous healing, a spontaneous emergence of one form or another order out of chaos. This is evolution and transformation and all possibilities exist in what's called the quantum field, right? The past, the present, the future, timelines, all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, so that's the, that's the idea I want to lead with. Now let's talk about the three states of the quantum field. And I really hope that I can communicate this in a way that really lands for you. Because when I went into this and I saw him explain this and I got it, I realized this is one of the most powerful insights for quote unquote manifestation, um, becoming a magnetic attractor in attracting and magnetizing the things that are most in alignment with us and the particular timeline that we are most aligned with in our life, otherwise known as our destiny. So the number one, uh, number one state of the quantum field is that energy is in motion or energy in motion represents pure potential. Okay. So this is, um, this is an imploding inward phenomenon. Okay. From the outward to the inward into the center. So what that means is that your, your energy is your energy body is, is imploding inward. So instead of going external, you might, you might be able to understand this as introversion. So your energy is introverted and you're cycling your energy from the outside world into yourself. So that would be like internal processing, um, the energy in motion is going inward. Okay. And so the, that inward energy that's in some kind of spiral like phenomenon or toroidal like movement pattern represents pure potential. That's all it is. It's pure potential energy consolidated as pure potential. The second state is energy in motion emerging outward from a central source from within into the external world. So think about it this way. The energy that's moving inward is cultivating this con this this concentrated potential. And then we we direct that energy from inward into outside of us from a central source being call it your solar plexus, your heart, whatever. It's coming from within you. And it, then it goes out. We might call that action, activity, um mental projection, whatever you want to think of that is. So there's an energy inward and there's an energy going outward. Now, what blew me away is that when I saw this explained, this is something I've been, I've been thinking about, something that I've been in. So no wonder why I saw it when I saw it. And when I got this message, I was like, that is it right there. There's a third state to this whole process, which is the embodiment state where you've integrated and you have embodied the pure potential and you've become pure potential. It has become part of your operating system. And now you are operating as that once pure potential now manifested as you. And it's not reliant on anything outside of you. It, it, it is, it's all happening simultaneously. It is what it is as you, as a being. So the third state is energy that is neither moving outward or inward, but is pulsing in place. Otherwise, it is stabilized and consistent. One of the challenges people have, and you can relate this to any sort of process, any transition in life, is that a lot of the challenges people have is they're not able to stabilize and fully harness their full potential. And this happens a lot in medicine ceremonies, plant medicines, where you are you are opening chakric gateways of energy and you are pulsating literally electromagnetically pulsating energy that you're not used to feeling and your body is being expanded your capacity to hold that energy is being expanded but then what do you do after the experience a lot of people they try to recreate it by go by by they associate the medicine or the substance as the peak experience. So then they try to use another medicine to get there and they kind of find out 
that they can't actually get there anymore. Part of that is because the intention has been lost, the sincerity and the genuine intention has been lost, and that's not that you got a glimpse of the mountain, but now you have to climb up the mountain. You can't just try to teleport back up. You got to actually do the work, right? You got to integrate and stabilize. So as in breath work and meditative processes is exactly the access point for this happening, the ultimate state of embodiment and transformation and healing as well is that when the energy is neither moving outside of you or it's neither it's neither coming inside of you as a, as a, a unidirectional phenomenon meaning one or the other you have harnessed that energy you've learned to work with that energy to the point where it codifies your biological vessel the cell to cell communication gets upgraded right everything that's going on in your physical vessel has been upgraded the operating system is more effective and efficient and you have li- literally be you have literally remodeled your body you've remodeled your being which is the next thing that we're going to kind of get into a little bit here so i'm going to say this one more time energy that is neither moving outward neither extroverted externalized or introverted internalized but is pulsing in place right it's stabilized and consistent there's neither you're not skipping into the future or the past and oscillating highs and lows happiness and sadness you know you're not in these self sabotage type of tendencies you are stable and consistent and then that comes back to the lambda state the epsilon state and these two in the hyper gamma state in particular those states all represent this pulsation of consistent stabilized energy so that is just incredible absolutely blew me away when i realized what is really the deal here what's really going on so now let's talk about where this goes now is this idea that you can remodel your entire body this idea is that the body is is designed as a self self physician a self healing vessel right we think that we have to heal the body or someone outside of us or something is going to heal us anything outside of us is merely a supportive component for the internal process that naturally is occurring the timeless mind ageless body phenomenon So let's just get that straight. Your body is what heals itself. You don't heal it, you support it or you get in the way of it, one or the other. And so the body renews itself and we know this. This has all been documented. This has been shown. Deepak Chopra really came out about this, you know, 30 years ago or 20 whatever it's been. And this is this has been further studied that every single compartment of your physical body goes through a, se- a sequence of renewal and remodeling. based on multiple factors but because of your stem cells particularly the youthening hormones the stem cells all the the mineral like everything that's going on especially when you're young and you know this because look you grew a brand new body the body that you're in you didn't have that when you came out of the womb that thing got constructed and built and rebuilt by the way great book to look into by Dr. Alberto Velaldo grow a new body He talks about this exact same thing. Your body remodels itself. All of your cells have a turnover rate. They remodel themselves into upgraded brand new cells. Your bone skeletal structure remodels itself. Um ideally densifies itself not not in a calcifying way, but in a bone density way where your bones are actually stronger. um your heart the physical organ of your heart and your red blood cells and all that that all remodels itself your immune system and the lyco the the t and b cells and all that stuff remodels itself completely um in fact actually let me let me actually get really accurate about that statement too um because i have it in front of me i haven't memorized this this is new information coming to us all the time but just to share this with you so your dna is designed to completely remodel itself within 2 months. Within 2 months your entire DNA double helix um codes encoded system your code your codex 
completely remodels itself in two months. Your physical brain is designed to remodel itself within one year. Your liver is designed to remodel itself within six weeks. Your bones are designed to remodel themselves in three months. That one blew me away. Your skin, which is the largest organ of your body, is designed to remodel its entire, all the skin cells and epithelial cells, designed to remodel itself in one month. Your blood, particularly the red blood cells, are designed to remodel themselves in four months months. So there you go. Now, what's possible with conscious intent? What's possible with understanding this and then actually tapping into those timeless mind states? How will that increase the remodeling of the human body? So I'll leave you with that. Now, I want to get into some other stuff that I'm just going to I'm just going to conclude our episode with some more ideas that I think will just tie all this together. Now, um, one of the things that is really important for all of this is that we want to all these brainwave states, they're not just they're not just um, determined by the brain itself. It's really about head, heart, brain, heart coherence. If you study the work of HeartMath Institute, they their science is very conclusive about this. Ultimately, the key here is to get into a, a brain wave state that is really connected to the heart. It's heart and head coherence when the, the brain and the heart are in complete communication, complete synergy with one another. And this is otherwise what we call full embodiment. When you are truly fully embodied, your brain and your heart are in complete coherent alignment and synergy with one another. Now, there's a few interesting things about this. Um, There's a lot of interesting things about this. I'm just kind of going to go with the flow of this because these ideas, um, there's a number of ideas. Now, I want to point out a few things. There's three things I think is important. Your vagus nerve, what's called your enteric nervous system, and your gut brain axis because you have three communication systems of intelligence in your physical body you have your brain you have your heart and then you have your gut these are all versions of what we associate as the brain and these all have brain cells or neurons riding within them in fact the gut brain axis because that's that's the gut houses a, a massive amount of neurons within it, particularly in the spinal cord. And the ETN, the enteric nervous system, is the interface between the gut or your guttural intelligence, like having a gut instinct, right? That's your real navigation system, by the way, not your emotions. And uh, that's something I would love to get into. I don't want to go too deep into it. But your emotions are the worst decision makers. You do not make decisions from emotion. You make it from guttural instinct when combined with the true power of the heart, which is not based on emotion. It's based on feeling, which is different. And also when the the brain itself is integrated in, in, in alignment with those intelligence centers. And then your vagus nerve, which is the intermediary between your sympathetic and your parasympathetic system. All of these compartments of the overall nervous system, all combine, they all communicate with one another. There's multiple factors why they get shut down or inhibited. We won't go into all that. Most of that's already been explained, particularly the gut-brain axis perspective and healing the gut. Um, not having food allergies in your diet, things that disrupt your your gut instinct, that disrupt your that desensitize your gut and leaky gut syndrome and and dysbiosis and all these things. Um, so that's really important to connect all this together. Now, um, I want to say emotions, but I'm going to say feel. I don't want to say emotions. I'm saying feelings associated with coherence, which has been described as the, 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 the feelings that give you access to the head and heart coherence are gratitude, appreciation, care, and compassion. These are the four identified feeling states 
that give you the access point to the gamma brain state. This has been documented. If you need to know what is the key to put into the lock to start getting into those deeper gamma brain states, it's gratitude, it's appreciation, it's care, and it's compassion. And those will start to synchronize as you practice it and you internalize it and you let the coding of those feeling states start to start to sweep over your entire being, particularly through breath work and meditative practices, you will start to access the gamma brain state. And the gamma brain wave state is the access point to start experiencing the hyper gamma and the other brain states as well. Um, in that unification, in that flow state, you don't get into flow until you get into gamma. That's where it really, really takes effect. So another thing I want to mention about the heart is that your heart has 40,000 specialized cells within it called sensory neurites. Sensory neurites are identical to brain neurons, but they're localized in the organ of the human heart. So they're not in the brain, they're in the human heart. And what we've discovered is that these neurons are identical, these neurites are identical to brain neurons. They feel, they they think there's the same activity in it, but they're in your heart, which is really interesting. So this idea of think with your heart is a very interesting thing because what we discover is that All decisions that people make, they make emotionally or they have a feeling. That is what drives decision making. But then very quickly, we rationalize through the mind. We rationalize our decisions. But it always starts from a a feeling state. You either feel secure or insecure. You feel certain or uncertain. You feel safe or unsafe. You feel confident or unconfident, right? And... The, the heart actually, these, these sensory neurites receive the information first and then the brain gets the information. So it's not the other way around. This is such an important concept to, to, to integrate and to understand about this whole, this whole thing we're talking about because it all ties together perfectly. Now, a few last things that I want to I bring into this for us as we close out. The integration of complementary opposites is the ultimate point of synergy here. When we integrate the, the, the inner conflicts, the core wounds, the inner criticism and the judgments, when we, when we create inner reconciliation in the consistent felt experience of harmonious peace, we are now able to synergize the brain and the heart, and through diet and lifestyle particularly, we can now activate our guttural instinct and our intelligence and get all three centers of intelligence lined up. And that is how we will start to access greater levels of our human potential. Two more things that I think we will just really um, solidify everything and allow us to, to conclude this, this incredible download we've went into. When we pray, this idea of affirmations and intentions, this is a practical, how do you apply this? How do you start demonstrating this in your real life? This idea of prayer, most people have been taught to pray through means of desperation as a reaction to things that we don't want to experience. Um, But it's not really, it's like allopathic medicine. It's like, oh, you broke something. Let's go surgery. Well, it's, it's like you're sick, right? Okay, let's take an antibiotic, right? That's not how prayer works. Prayer is a demonstration of faith in things unseen, but evident because this is the embodied state. You experience it as if it's happening, regardless of what your outside world um, suggests to you. So when we pray for what we want on the outside, there must be an equal or greater effect that occurs on the inside. The feeling is the prayer, not the outside ritual or affirmation in the form of mere words. It's the feeling in of itself that is the prayer. So you don't even have to say anything. The feeling tone that you carry with you through your day is the prayer in action. And this is the embodiment state that we're looking to create with the head and heart coherence to influence the brain states 
which ultimately influence the quantum mobility that we talked about, the energy mobility of getting from the, the externalizing or the internalizing to the stabilization of that pulsing of the cell, of the quanta particle, whatever you want to call it. It also, in, in layman's terms, means to be centered. To be stable means to be centered. You're centered in yourself. You're not swaying in and out. You're centered. You're stable, consistent. One of the great quotes that I want to share with you from um, Greg Braden is that a miracle is only a miracle until we understand how it works and then all of a sudden it becomes a technology. So once we know how this stuff works and we can demonstrate it in our life, then it becomes a technology, it becomes a tool that we can utilize over and over and over. And uh, when we pray for something to occur, we are acknowledging that it doesn't fully exist. So this is the last point of the, the tying all this together is that when we pray for something to happen, like I'm praying for the healing of my body, we are acknowledging that our body is not yet healed. And so there's always going to be this gap or perceived lag time that never quite comes to fruition. I am praying for my abundance to come. I can feel my abundance coming. That's great, but that's not going to help you for to feel it coming. It's always going to be coming to you. That is the energy in motion, either inward or outward, but it's not stabilized. So the stabilized pulsing quantum embodiment is that I feel my abundance, my prosperity, my wealth fully present in my experience, but not the affirmation, the experience. And that's where you go into the processes of quantum collapse, the quantum collapse process, which I I created as a hybridization of some of the incredible mentorship that I've received and just studying all this for you know, so long and applying it to my own life and my clients, the quantum collapse process is really a process where you collapse, you collapse, um, the past and the pre the past and the future. And you're essentially collapsing the gap between who you've become accustomed to being, who you've rehearsed yourself as being and who you truly are and who you desire to be that you know is possible. You collapse the gap and integrate that together so you become who you are instead of being one or the other, in and out, future, present, oscillating. You stabilize your own centered energy and you become all that you are as a felt experience that you now can rehearse over and over until it sticks and you no longer have to work on yourself. You no longer have to do self-help or, or any of this stuff because you're not broken. There's nothing to fix. You're completely whole and healed and complete. Now you can move forward as your full, whole, transformed self. So, oh man, definitely, definitely excited to get this out. I wanted to do this as early in the day as possible. And I'm so grateful that we took this journey together. What an incredible journey this was. Um, As you go through this series on the mind-body connection, go back to it after. Listen to it again after we've gone through the other material. And let me know your thoughts. I'm interested to see how this affects you in a deep and profound way. So thank you, as always, for tuning in to another super fun deep dive episode with me, Ronnie Landis. And uh, the next episode that we do is going to be all about the deep, deep dive discovery and journey and science of entheogenic plant-based medicine. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of High Performance Health. Remember the saying, knowledge is power. Well, knowledge is only power when the knowledge has been applied. So, before you leave, I want to recommend five basic principles that, if done each day, will result in physical vitality, emotional well-being, and increased mental agility, as well as overall resilience to all forms of stress. 
Number one, take 10 deep diaphragmatic breaths each morning when waking up and each night before sleeping. Number two, remember one liter of high quality structured water each morning before eating. Number three, eat only when hungry. Do not eat too much too fast and bless your food each and every day. Number four, close your eyes. Put your hands on your heart and relax your nervous system. And number five, only use phones when necessary. Keep your back upright when on the computer and shut down screen time in 90 minutes prior to going to bed. There you go, my friend. I hope you take what you learned in this episode and create the life you deserve. You can support this podcast by going to www.hhphealth.com forward slash review to give us a rating and a review. This helps boost us in the iTunes ratings and makes this podcast more visible to more people in the world. You can also join the discussion on our Facebook community group by going to www.hhphealth forward slash group. And finally, you can also check out all of my current coaching programs, courses, books, podcast episodes, and more by going to www.hhphealth.com. Thank you for being part of the health and healing movement. And until next time, make the rest of your life the best of your life. Aloha.